live from Soho, New York City, celebrating one year of live wearable electronics. It's wearable electronics of Vicky Stern. Hey, everybody. I make it in the one word. <laughs> <laughs> wearable electronics of Vicky Stern. Wearable electronics of Vicky yeah. Stern. Welcome to the show. It's August 6th, and it is indeed our show's one year anniversary. Yeah. With me today is Mr. Lady Ada himself, Phil. Yeah. What is on today's show? On today's show, we'll be celebrating, you guessed it, one year of wearable electronics of Becky Stern. That means you get 10% off in the wearables category all the way up until midnight. Code is one year. Wearable Wednesday. We're going to debut a new video and talk about cool stuff other people made this week. Okay. We're going to do a component of the week. We have a new flora sensor to debut for you today. That's right. Tools we really, really, really like more than the tools we don't. Yep. A tool <laughs> from, my, from Becky's desk. Yeah. And questions answer. You got questions, Becky has answers. If you have questions during today's show or any show, you can put them in the comments here on YouTube or on Twitter or Facebook, to Snapchat. Trist. Go or Google Plus. <laughs> and um, we yeah. will get to them on a future show. Um, if your question is answered on the air, you will be yeah. eligible to win the show's giveaway. Today's big giveaway. It's a big prize because it's a big deal. Yeah. But it's our one year anniversary and it is a Flora sensor pack and the two sensors that, that are too new to be included in the Flora sensor pack. So it's all of the sensors and the Flora. Okay. All that more on We're Electronic Becky Stern. Woohoo. All right, first up. So this week you are wearing I'm wearing Google Glass. We're yeah. gonna do this new what are you wearing segment. We'll have yeah. a graphic for it soon. I didn't get a chance to go to the wearable mistake bucket. The wearable mistake bucket. Before the show, we if talked about that. If you have a special that. wearable rec wearable mistake you would like to see fill in, yeah. please request it you in can the comments. Just, on Engadget, you can see my article series from like 10 years ago called Watch This Wednesday. And it was a whole collection of watches. Of watches. I'm more interested in the face stuff that we, you have. Yeah, if you, you look on Make and you look at any of the wearables roundups that yeah. Phil's on, there's all these funny pictures of Phil wearing silly things. Yeah, you got a face computer. I had a, a wrist computer. Yeah. So today um, I'm wearing the Google Glass. Yeah, we wear a lot of these wearable things, so you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> we we kind of... I'm trying wait. it. Yeah. I'm trying it really hard. I'm yeah. trying everything about the glass that there is to try. Google Glass has a weird thing with it, because it's more than just Google Glass, because some people use Google Glass in ways that make other people not comfortable with it. Just like, I remember digital cameras. When digital cameras first came out, and it was easy to take photos everywhere. Yeah. People were like, well, why are you taking photos everywhere? I got kicked out of um, the, the, city, the Citibank Mall yeah. at a 2600 hacker meeting <laughs> because I was taking digital photos with my giant digital camera. And uh, they, were, they were taking me out. Right, and I like, said, why are you taking those pictures? And I, and I said, oh, it's not a real camera. It doesn't have film. <laughs> <laughs> and I showed them that, and they actually kind of went with it for a second, but they didn't understand. Well, I find I'm doing a lot of educating, although I haven't been stopped on the street yet because I tried yeah. to keep it low-key and wear a baseball hat, but like people are like, oh, I don't know when you're recording. And I was like, really? Because if you don't see the prism lit up, I'm not recording you. Yeah, but they don't know that. They, they don't know that. Constantly. But I can take a picture by winking. Yeah. I just did it. I just took a picture of... Uh, the of light that. over there, the light yeah. mainly. So weirdo selfie, selfie. Yeah, I like it for the hands-free video stuff for this kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know, I'm trying it out. It's what I'm wearing this Wednesday. Yeah, so I'll try to have one of my I things. don't like that it covers up my eyebrows. I put a lot of work into my eyebrows and you can't, and oh. like, you know. You want you want a Google Glass up there so it looks like you're always surprised or something? I want a Jordi LaForge Google Glass oh, like okay. this so that you can see my oh, that's eyebrows. Nice. But this isn't useful. Anyway. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. That's what I'm wearing this week. Next okay. week, maybe Phil will be wearing something. I'll have something wearable. Wearing. Wearable electronics. We have a few to yeah. choose from. All right. If you want to strap things to yourself that are made out of electronics, but you want to build them, you can use the code one year, 10% off in the interest store. I can't believe it's been a year. We did four, this is our yeah. 49th episode. We, c we took like a holiday week off. We took another, there was some week when we were yeah. all traveling when we took off, and but mainly, Mainly it's been um, every single week. We've yeah. only missed like two. Yeah. The only live wearable show every single week and the longest running live wearable show. Because you get both with that. Yeah, you get both. You get both <laughs> it's the only you get, yeah. The only and the longest running. Okay, yeah. moving right along. Um, on the Adafruit site lately, we've been running some back to school articles. Uh, kits for educators, all kinds of things to get you ready to go back to school. I know I teach a class at SBA in the fall. So I'm also getting ready for back to school with my students um, and uh, all prepped for the new semester. So if you're looking yeah. for um, some supplies, 
or and you want to get a good deal on some supplies, you could use the codes from today's various live shows t to yep. get your school supplies all set up. Yeah, this year, um, lots of educators so far it looks like they're using Gemma. Yep. In their workshops mm -hmm. and um, it's getting cheap, started. It's easy. There's good tutorials. Yeah, cheap, easy. You get um, some type of programming w with it. You mm -hmm. get some type of um, crafting, and you have great tutorials. So easy peasy, as they say. Lemon squeeze, jam squeezy. Jam squeezy. <laughs> All right. Next up. AT&T stuff, wearables. Oh yeah, AT&T and um, NYU Poly and NYC Media Lab is doing this challenge for... And Adafruit. And Adafruit. Yeah. It's doing this challenge for making um, pedestrians safer, because you know how everybody is doing the walking and the texting and the, and the getting hit by the cars. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? That pedestrian injury rate is higher than bicycle injury rate? That's for right. like for New York City traffic, like you're more likely to be hit by a car walking than you are. That's right. On a bike. On a, well, we're in Soho here. <laughs> on a daily basis, um, when you get out of work here, you have to play the game called Watch Out for Texter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Watch out for the jerk who's not paying attention. Watch where out he's for going. Texter. And 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 it's tough because there's a group of people that are all trying to watch out for the texter. Sometimes the texter is almost. They have a near miss, which have is. Have you seen the Casey Neistat video about walking while texting? No. It's really funny. It has all these like overhead like, watch out for your blind spot, and it's like yeah. this. It's the whole spot. My, my favorite one, <laughs> if you Google it, is guy texting, and I guess they, there was a helicopter and they were looking at something else, and the helicopter was just kind of like, above a city, and you see a person, they walk underneath a tree, and then you see that, and they were just texting because they weren't paying attention, and then you see them run the other way, and there was a bear. <laughs> <laughs> the bear, you see the bear go, ah! <laughs> you see the bear go after them. <laughs> the, the We're not out. one of those cities where, where you're just going to randomly see like a moose walking down the street. Sometimes yeah. that happens in cities with more like land and less water around them. Yeah. Um, but there's def definitely like that guy who's driving his Escalade too fast. I feel like taxi drivers watch pretty closely and they're on the they, road all the time. But too, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing, right, where people aren't paying attention yeah. how so, they're walking. So AT&T and NYU Poly, they're, they're doing this challenge for for app designs, for wearable designs, yeah. for a bunch of different things that address this problem. Um, and um, you know more about it than I do. They're like, yeah. they're, we, all the kits are gone, right? The kits that they were giving away for free. No, you can still apply right now. You can apply and yeah. they're gonna get more maybe. Yeah, you can apply right now and then you can figure out what your idea is for um, you know, texting or just pedestrian safety. I mean, you can actually kind of take it head on. You can say, well, there's gonna be a distance sensor and it'll be, you know, you, you'll wear it and if your gaze goes down for too long, obviously if you're walking, because maybe there'll be an accelerometer or a GPS, you shouldn't be looking down while you're walking right. the entire time. You could use our new nine off sensor we're gonna talk about later. Um, yeah. But there's also like some things you could put at the intersection that would let, let you know that you're approaching an intersection, like all of that kind of stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. the link is uh, on the site right now if you wanna go check out more about this challenge. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. Next up. Cool idea. This is from the blog. From the blog, Reed Morse um, sent in this cool little 3D printed pull tab he made for his JST connectors on his battery wires. Um, a lot of people tell me that these JST connectors are really hard to pull out from their sockets, and um, people without fingernails tend yeah. to have difficulty. So Reed made this this little pull tab. You glue onto the JST connector, and then you can pull it out uh, without yanking on your wires either, uh, which can be, if, it, if they're new plugs, they can be really snug and you could rip, rip your wires out. So you can download his design and 3D print it uh, from Thingiverse. The link's on the blog. Thanks, okay. Reed. All right, next up. I saw this this morning. This is very nice. So Leslie's project is out. This is the Close Encounters hat. Um, it uses Gemma and a photo cell and a piezo and some NeoPixels yeah. to, to create a, an effect similar to the spaceship in Close Encounters of a Third Kind. It's, it's really fun. All right. We have a little video. All right, and we're back. So nice, nice job, Leslie. The tutorial's up on the Adafruit Learning System. Um, it has the different colors beeping in time with the sound. It's a really good basic Gemma project. Those of you who are working on your hats off challenge um, ideas and you're hoping you'll get selected, you or you just want to play along at home, you can um, check out Leslie's project for some inspiration. Okay. <clears throat> Speaking of. 
Sen sensors and sensors and things. These are all of the flora sensors. Yeah. Um, they communicate over I squared C, and that's this week's video is helping you decide which one of these lovely sensors, advanced sensors, is good for your flora project. Yeah. We couldn't do like a music video like how do you know? Because <laughs> we we get shut down. We we could if yeah. you would like if you would like me to do a music video, yeah. you can request it in the comments. And yeah. if there's a lot of thumbs up, I am willing to sing on camera. But okay. but only if there's a lot of thumbs up. All right. How do you know? Yeah. This sensors for you. Yeah. See this. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. Okay. Sensors. They're great for bringing interactivity to your wearables projects, and the Flora family of high-tech sewable sensors just keeps growing. They chain together over I squared C, so you won't use up all of the pins on your Flora or sew huge amounts of conductive thread. Let's pick out the right Flora sensor for your project. First, let's get things moving. The Flora LSM303 contains an accelerometer, which is great for detecting your dance moves, footsteps, or roller coaster rides. We've used it in the hem of the sparkle skirt and on this wristband to flash some NeoPixels when you walk or shimmy. The LSM303 board also contains a compass, which you can use to tell which way you're facing. Use it alone to get your cardinal bearings or in combination with the GPS for navigation, like in the Neo Geo watch or city bike helmet. If you need even more motion data, the 9 degrees of freedom sensor is the new LSM9 DSO, which is a gyroscope as well. Altogether great for sensing orientation and heading in 3D space. Now let's shed some light on the TSL2561 luminosity sensor. It'll read visible light, infrared, or both. Maybe you could make a darkness activated headlamp or a hat that detects infrared security cameras. If it's a sunburn you're worried about, the SI1145 UV index sensor is perfect for helping you remember to reapply your SPF like in the sunscreen reminder hat project. This last one is extra fun. You can detect the color of an object with the TCS34725 color sensor. The onboard LED shines onto the object, reflecting light into the sensor for an accurate color reading. Great for matching your accessories to your outfit, like in the chameleon scarf or floor umbrella. Each Adafruit wearable sensor has an Arduino library with sample code to get you started and projects to build on the Adafruit learning system. Tell us what you're building in the comments, and if you have questions, I'll tackle them on our wearables live show each week right here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. Okay, excellent video. Thank you, Good all work. of the sensors. Here they are. They all chained together. I sewed this, this sample thing, and I don't know if I'm gonna make it into a pillow, and then you just throw it around, and it, all it does is it senses all the things. That's a neat idea. Right. Like a sensor ball. Yeah, sensor ball. We could do it with the the because like these are the things we think are most commonly sensed for wearables. But we have a couple. We have yeah. several more sensors, uh, barometric pressure sensors. Be funny to make a ball with all of the sensors on it, and it just has a readout. This is, yeah, this is a sensitive just, project. It yeah. just senses everything. Um, anyway, if you'd like to pick up any of the Flora sensors, you can get ten percent off using code one year because it's our one year anniversary. Okay today, or you know, tomorrow actually. Component but, yeah. of the week. We've got them. <clears throat> this is the new Flora 9 off sensor. So it's the same as the LSM 303, but with a gyro. Yeah. So you can um, sense your position relative to gravity, yep. your position relative to the strongest magnetic force, which is usually magnetic north, yeah. it's the compass, and then the gyro. Your orientation. The turning, your yeah. orientation. So you can use this sensor to make your own Oculus Rift. Perfect for a plushy drone. Plushy, <laughs> plushy. <laughs> plushy quad cuff shirt. Yeah. It's perfect <laughs> for that. <laughs> Klaus Oldenburg's soft fan yeah. comes to mind. Soft quadcopter. Well, Martha Stewart's into her drones now. She has drones. So. I know. I, I adore the Martha Stewart drone coverage. Yeah. She's just like, oh. My gardens. I love my yeah. drones. I like that she's getting mad about the regulations. She's like, I have these drones now. You can't take them away. <laughs> so. I, I have all, all kinds of love for Martha Stewart. Um, so, the we have this is the uh, three volt version of the nine off sensor. Um, there's a nine off and a ten off, which also has a barometric pressure for altitude um, in regular form. And we brought over the simple nine off version to the Flora sewable so that you can do like a 
a jacket that knows what orientation you are. Say you do like dance motion capture, um, this would be perfect for that. You can go to the next slide and you can see that um, you can use it for, uh, we have a tutorial on the learning system now. This is the non-flora version of the sensor um, that lets you do, what's it called, attitude heading, or yeah. what's the R stand for in space? Uh -huh. This, you can do this. <laughs> Rotation. Yeah, rotation. That's what it is. You can do um, like position yourself in 3D space and um, get that information uh, to a visual simulation on the computer, yeah. like you're seeing here with the rabbit. That's a processing sketch. Yeah. When you need to make sure the rabbits are level, it's a big deal. Or when you want to visualize how the the body is positioned, um, yeah. we can use this Flora Nine Off sensor, mm -hmm. and eventually it'll replace our regular LSM 303 because it has all the same parts plus some. Um, but it'll we'll phase okay. it out eventually. It's yeah. on sale. Yeah, it's on sale for ten percent off. Yeah. If you if you hadn't asked a question and are waiting to win the, the sensor prize, then you could just buy it now. Yeah. Okay, tools we love this week. This is a good one. This is the I'm glad you picked this one. The Hako brass soldering iron tip cleaner. And I use this instead of a wet sponge because I can't be bothered. No, it's not that I can't be bothered to keep a bottle of water at my desk, it's that I can't be trusted to keep a bottle of water at my desk because I will spill it on the keyboard. This is why we can't have wet things. Yes, this is why this one can't have wet things. Uh, actually, I eat and drink at my desk all the time. However, it you... That's different. It's different. That's different because the goal is to get the liquid squishy things into my into mouth you. instead of like this thing that I use instead for soldering. Of, instead of this thing being kind of who knows where. There and I'm not using it all the yeah. time and then I whack it and then yeah. there's water everywhere. I, I prefer this too. Um, it's just nice, it's always there for you. You don't have to worry about your, your sponge drying out. Uh, what happens is the brass um, has a lot of surface area and when you stabby stab your uh, soldering iron tip into it, the uh, bare brass like capillary action slurps off the excess solder and also has a little bit of light abrasion. So um, if there's like a chunk of anything oxidized on your soldering iron, it helps yeah. clean it off. Um, so I use it instead of, you can use it in conjunction with um, a wet sponge for I, soldering. I saw this Kickstarter that there's controversy over whether it's like gonna work out or not. And the top of the computer has this um, copper like foam it looks like, mm -hmm. and it, look, it looks kind of like this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh cool, I thought maybe it was for your soldering iron. What like, was it for? It's supposed to cool it, but it's unknown if that actually, <laughs> if that actually works. You put like a, like a ginger wig on your computer yeah. and then you're stabbing yeah. your soldering so, iron into it. So imagine like that, but maybe on top of a computer using it that's its cooling system sure. instead of a heat sink. Oh, because it's got lots of surface area. So you can yeah. also... Um, so I don't know if it works or you not. You can pick one of these up in the shop, but if you... Um, this works for what it's supposed to do. It does, sure. and this is great uh, for what it's supposed to do. The And then the little bits of solder like collect at the bottom, and you can clean them out by opening it up. Um, you can also find this stuff, this brass sponge stuff, like at the hardware store by itself, um, yeah. if you don't want to buy this. And um, a copper mesh would work too. Just make sure it's not the... Um, the kind you get, the scrubber sponge that's actually plastic mesh that's copper plated because yeah, that, that stuff will melt. Yeah. So you have to make sure it's solid metal all the way through. Okay. And if you want to pick up that wonderful solder, Paco, tip, cleaner. solder tip cleaner brass sponge, it's, it's my favorite. I like it. That's yeah, why I'm off. showing it to you because I use it at my desk. Okay. A year of questions and answers. There's so many questions. Like I was tallying them up. It's, it's, a, it's like a hundred and something. Yeah. We don't have. Um, we don't have someone who does this now, but maybe one day we'll do a supercut of every question. Bing, 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 that bing, would be bing, amazing. Bing, bing, yeah, bing, bing, clips show. Well, that would actually not be as hard. Clips show would be hard because I have to watch every episode yeah. again. But just to skim out just the question part, which is always at the yeah. end, wouldn't be that hard. Or a supercut. Can you watch it? 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 How many neopixels? How many neopixels? How many neopixels? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm going to make fun of you. That'll be our supercut. I would never make fun of you guys. No, it's not. It's not making fun of. It's a popular question. So popular, it is a popular question. we did a video around it. <laughs> we did. If you ask me a question too many times, eventually I just make yeah. it a video, and then whenever I send you a link, I make this noise at my desk. Whoosh. Yeah, done. Anyway, this is the prize. It's all of the sensors. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, this is in. Uh, this is a comment on a video. You brutally unplugged the JST connector. I'm pretty <laughs> cautious with mine because the wires feel so fragile. Clearly, you have a lot more experience than I do. What is your recommendation to handle JST plugs on LiPo? Batteries. I like Richard how you're like, what you just did made me really uncomfortable, but you, yeah. you're supposed to know more about this than me, so what is the deal? Yeah. Um, I have uh, broken one battery that way, one, ever, and mm. I brutally unplug them like that all the time. However, um, my Floras get unplugged and plugged a, a lot, and when you first get your Flora or your Gemma um, 
or your whatever with JST port on it, it can be a little snug. And likewise, your battery can be a little, yeah. just the fit can be snug. And mine are not snug anymore because I unplug them repeatedly. If you want to get that well-worn in feeling, yeah. like you could take a nail file to the outside of your, of your uh, plugs and then like it won't, feel as brutal as it looked on the video. Um, or you can make, since you seem really uncomfortable about this, you can um, you can make Reed Morse's 3D printed pull tab, which I thought yeah. was a really great solution to um, a problem I have heard from you guys but don't experience myself. Yeah. But also, keep in mind, folks at home, I've seen Becky reach into someone's chest, pull their heart out, show it to them, and then sew it back together with conductive thread. So. <laughs> So I might have more experience it's than a thing. just your average, your JST <laughs> unplugger. All right, can we get an update on the flora and trinket books? Can't wait. Oh, I know about one of these. You know about the trinket book? Because yeah. I, I don't. I don't. Um, flora book is coming. We're working on it, I promise. Um, yeah. We want to get the, all the writing is going to be done by the end of August. So wow. we're, okay. we're very close. OK, that's um, a big deal. Yeah, we slacked for a little while. Okay. Trinket book done in the can. Oh man! Signings at Maker Fair. Mike Barella. Yeah. He's he beat us. He started his book after us too. Me and yeah. Tyler got a we're lighting a fire under us. We're working on it. Well, keep in mind we took the tutorials that were on the learning system that Mike did, and he got a, he had a bit of a head start because it was kind of we kind of yeah. Knew this. So we're doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> just that we keep adding new try, flora sensors. Trying to help you out here. <laughs> I know, thanks. <laughs> I'm trying to compliment Mike. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it worked out. It's going to be a great book. And yeah. um, because it was such a, a good getting started book with projects, um, the format is going to be uh, more project-based because it's that good. Yeah, awesome. Um, That'll be really cool. Yeah, flora book also yeah. is similar. It has a couple projects, um, describes oh. every sensor. This Actually, writing this video helped me out with one of my writing deadlines. Cause okay. <laughs> Happens. Yeah, it happens. Okay, here we go. I'm further trying to program NeoPixels for my Halloween costumes. Can I get? Can I connect multiple NeoPixels on to multiple outputs on an Arduino or Gemma? If so, how do I go about declaring that on the IDE? Because for now, I can only program one long strand and not multiple strands. Thanks. Voted for you guys on the Adafruit Live Show Awards. Thank you. The streamies. Thanks. Yay. Thanks, Antonio. You can. Uh, you just have to declare an additional. Um, uh, what you call it? Uh, is it a class? Oh, um, uh, let me look at your answer. You have to uh, declare another uh, strand, yes, and you just class. need to, yeah, it's a class, right? You just have to make, uh, like, instantiate another instance of the class with a different name. So you can see in the NeoPixel Uber Guide is what I screenshotted here, yeah. so you can look Common at that. Common question. We actually have, that is an answer. <laughs> yeah, in the, it's in the FAQ on the NeoPixel Uber Guide. So if you head over to the Adafruit Learning System, you'll see that there. You just see how you, it's called strip A and strip B, yeah. and, um, and those are just different um, instances of class Adafruit NeoPixel. OK. Next up. This one, the components a person has, a floor, accelerometer, compass, GPS, all from Adafruit. They want to build a project that lets them carry a Sparkway glove, wave it in a direction, target, LED, blink, else red, move towards destination, LED, green, green move away towards LED, blink, red. So my question is, how can I calculate distances between two GPS location, and does the Adafruit library have a function for it? It also, can I use a compass to point towards arbitrary direction and get comparison between actual destination direction and compass direction and get the difference? Yes. We have a project for you. We have a project for you. It is called the Flora Neo Geo Watch, and it does uh, almost exactly what you're talking about. It does the whole, like, um, calculate the, di the distance between your location and a GPS location, and that is um, that is simple triangle math, so it is not a built-in function to the GPS library, um, but you can see it done in the sample code for this project. So you should look at, at the Airfruit Learning System, look up the Flora Neo Geo Watch, and it uses the compass accelerometer to yeah. get um, cardinal bearing uh, it also does that, uh, uses the compass accelerometer in combination with the GPS to get uh, direction towards your goal. And then it also does a uh, color change based on how far away you are from the goal. So those functions, and the, the code is pretty easy to understand on the Flora Neo Geo Watch. Thanks, Tyler, for doing such a nice job. Yes. OK, next up. Hi, Becky. How can I take out the wrinkles from a piece of conductive fabric? It came folded a couple times. I tried the iron, but it didn't work. Alex, it is like you were saying, I tried to wash the dishes with the dishwasher, but the dishwasher didn't work. What can you do? You get, a, get a new dishwasher. Get a new dishwasher. <laughs> You're, um... Is that the answer? That's not the wrong answer. That's the wrong answer right. Put your conductive fabric in the dishwasher. This is no, why you yeah. answer the questions. <laughs> and I just click the slides. Um, 
you uh, just like use a use a hotter iron. Uh, maybe use a little bit of steam. I don't know what kind of conductor fabric you ordered. Uh, the shiny nylon kind, the woven. So you're saying try, try, try again. Will discolor if you steam it, but if you steam the whole thing, it'll discolor discolor evenly. Um, it's kind of like taffeta y. So um, use a hotter iron and then consider using a little light steam. Uh, okay. Or iron it, get it nice and hot, then sandwich it in a really heavy book and leave it until it's cool. Because okay. uh, fibers, the way they work is that they get softer when they're warm and then they need to be repositioned. So the mm -hmm. iron is the right tool, just um, get use your iron better. I'm not, or potentially I don't a new dishwasher. A new, you might need a new dishwasher. <laughs> potentially. I heard that yours is leaking. <laughs> Potentially. Okay. Guess what? Those are the questions, Vicky. Okay. So you um, got to you got to give away, give away. This is a really big prize today. So yeah. I'm sorry that I kind of made fun of you a little, Alex. But I, in in exchange, I will make you eligible for this really nice prize, which is the Flora sensor pack plus the UV index sensor yeah. plus the nine off sensor because those are the two sensors that are new and are not included in the Flora sensor pack in the Jones hat. Yeah. The audio rea audio reactive Jones hat. Okay. Here giveaways. it is. This is happening. And the anniversary giveaway winner is. How do I know? Nathan, you win. You asked about oh. our books. Update and you just won a Flora sensor pack and a 9 off sensor and UV index sensor. Congratulations. You can, uh, looks like it says YouTube. So you can send us an email at support at adafruit.com to claim your prize. Or I will also, I'll also send you a message yep. on YouTube. Congrats. I hope you make something really awesome with the, all that stuff. Okay. And with that, that's the show. That's the show. One Thanks, year. you guys, for watching every week. It really means a lot to me. And um, I hope that we have many more years of fun wearable electronics live show. Yeah, we'll keep doing this as long as people are interested in wearable electronics. And I and it seems like they are. It's it seems been, like they are. It's been a good year. This year, there's been a lot of things. Yeah, this has been a big year of wearables. I think one of the big changes is it was probably only going to be the big companies saying, here's what wearables are. Yeah. And this is what you guys want, and this is what you're going to buy. But now that there's so many um, tutorials, and there's things like Flora, and there's shows like this, I think that people, their imaginations can kind of take them. Um, on the show and tell, someone wanted a device that would, like, only did one thing, single serving for them. I think it would, would alert them after 30 minutes or something. That's it. That's all they wanted. And they yeah. use, like, NinjaFlex to uh, print out the, the wristband. And that's something you may never get. You know, maybe Fitbit will get around to it one day or something. But right, but the, the idea that, the, you know, because things you wear on your body are really personal. So, yeah. like, the idea that you just wait around for Apple or Samsung to tell you what to wear on your body is a little odd. Yeah. Uh, and the data it collects and shares, like, it's like, yeah. well, like, you can, you can purchase those things, but the, the DIY aesthetic and the DIY kind of Values. It's really yours then. Yeah, so it's neat. I think I think this has been a, a turning point for for mm -hmm. wearables. It's not just like, oh, here's like a little light up plushie, which is cool. More like, hey, this light up plushie can, um, you know, tell me the direction and has a sensor pack and you know and you can like, use it as talks a, to my kid. Yeah, or, or you can use it as a game controller. Yeah, and here's all these new materials. There's like. Um, you know how there's always been like high fashion and fa fashion in magazines and like get the look on the cheap, yeah. like build it yourself. There's like DIY fashion, um, uh, you know, ecosystem yeah. that exists with like this com consumerist sort of like fashion ecosystem. And I think we're going to see the same thing with wearables. You see like wearables you can buy um, that are really shiny and really small and yeah. really waterproof. And then there's wearables that really express who you are. And those are the ones that you build yourself. So yeah. Super I think cool. the collision of the 3D printing and, and wearables is, is getting interesting. That's new this year, too. Did not expect that. If you no, asked, me neither. If you asked last year when we started the show, what's yeah. going to be kind of the things that you and I are both excited about? It would we, not be 3D we printing. We would have not have said 3D printing. Sorry, 3D printing. No, we would have said bio wearables, or like, you know, something like, yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed, sensors. I wouldn't have guessed 3D printing and, and uh, wearables would have, would have meshed so well. Who knew? Yeah. Anyway, we'll be so, back here uh, next week for a not anniversary show. Uh, tomorrow we have a big surprise happening, so um, we do. Oh, we do. We do. <laughs> um, around, I mean, we do. Around the middle of the day, I don't know if you want to like hang out on the YouTube, you might see yeah, something pretty exciting. Yeah, 3 p.m. Happening. tomorrow, most likely there's going to be a new show, but you guys can tune into that. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but if you have a project to show off, maybe you made 
a drones hat like that guy last week made made the the hat. Yeah. I was really I really like it when you come on the show and tell and you show off and you're like I made it from Becky's tutorial. You know what that says to me? My tutorial works. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I we we edit them, but yeah. you know. It's, we trust Becky that the tutorials work. Um, we really like it when people make <laughs> when it they up. really do work. Because like we're, we're, we can't always go through. Everything. No, we can't always have a test build. Um, yeah. Although you know, I can prove that the co the code does what it does here. Yeah. But like, what I mean is that it really um, well sometimes proves to me that my instructions are clear and yeah. that you guys are grokking it. And then I know that you guys are giving are putting feedback if something needs yeah. to be fixed. Sometimes, it, um, not on our site, but other sites, the, the the guides are very wiki like and they're just text, and no one can make them, and so right. they're they're right, but there's but they they don't have photos and there's no instructions. So it's really cool when someone can look at our photos and instructions. And make a guide, make a make a project from the guide, yeah. and um, not need any help. That, that is means, our that means goal. we did a good job. That is our goal. Though we do have the Adafruit support forums, if you get stuck on a tutorial, and that yeah. usually helps us then um, close the feedback loop and and make the tutorial better, like make yeah, it yeah. more clear to address whatever confused you in the first place. But yeah. um, we really try to address visual learners, text learners, like show you all of the steps needed to do. There's no gotchas. Yeah, we usually There's, have video. video yeah, check. video. Like all the sticky parts, we try to make it really easy for you. So if you ever have feedback for our tutorials, we welcome. Um, the suggestions for improvements. Okay, but well, you can show your project off on the show and tell today at 7:30. Yep. Then watch Ask an Engineer. Yeah. And tomorrow you could tune in for our new show. Yeah. And then end of this month, we're celebrating five years of Ask an Engineer. That's incredible. All shows have anniversaries in August. Yeah, it seems to be our thing. August anniversary. Thanks so much for watching. Say so we'll be here next week. Okay. Bye. Don't forget to code one year. I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Bye.